The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are Super Bowl 55 champions, led by Tom Brady. What do you do after winning the Super Bowl in dominant fashion and throwing an epic parade? Well, bring the band back together. In fact, the Bucs are the first team in the salary cap era to bring back all 22 starters from a Super Bowl winning team. Tom Brady was clearly the missing link to get this team over the hump, and this is now the team that established stars are willing to take a lesser role and perhaps less money to win, which is directly tied to TB12. This team is deep and talented, and dare I say it, it's better than the team that won the Super Bowl a year ago. Anything less than a repeat with this loaded group will feel like a disappointment as Brady will look to win an unprecedented eighth ring. The reality is that you got to stay focused on what's really important. How do you improve? How do you get better from week to week, day to day? In the draft, there weren't too many holes to fill, so GM Jason Light looked to the future and selected pass rusher Joe Tryon and potentially Tom Brady's successor in Kyle Trask. Luckily, they believed in me enough to give me this opportunity, and you know they're going to get everything I got. Will the Bucks become the first team since the 2004 Patriots to repeat? To win nine playoff games without losing, we're all going to go celebrate and have a hell of a summer. This is a team that will likely embrace being the hunted this time around. And it was those 2003-04 Patriots that won back-to-back, -back, the last teams to win back-to-back. -back. Odds to win Super Bowl 56 this year. Chiefs at the top, plus 500. Buccaneers are right there, plus 650. To the Bills, Rams, and 49ers rounding out the top five. You got Aaron Rodgers. Will he come back? Will he leave the package? Will he retire? Plus 2,000. What about those Patriots? Bill Belichick trying to win his seventh Super Bowl title. Plus 3,000 for the dudes in Foxborough. And we welcome in the Wizard of Odds, Kenny White and Ryan Wilson, who also covers the NFL for us here on uh, CBS. Uh, top NFC win total, guys, to go over. We'll start with you, Ryan. You know what, uh, Larry? I'm going to go with the Vikings. And here's the deal with, with Minnesota. They're in division with the Green Bay Packers, and historically that follows Aaron Rodgers. We don't know what's going on with Aaron Rodgers. Maybe he shows up next week. Maybe he doesn't. But even if he does show up, what Aaron Rodgers is that going to be? And I think when you look at Minnesota, Mike Zimmer, the head coach there, was certainly unhappy with how things ended last year, winning seven football games. He's a defensive guy through and through. That defense will be better uh, because of it. They're getting Michael Pierce out uh, back, who opted out last year because of COVID. I think Kirk Cousins is going to be better because they bolster the offensive line through the draft. They used their first-round draft pick. Uh, Christian Darius thought helped that offensive line. And of course, they have all the playmakers. Last year's first-round pick, Justin Jefferson, fantastic se season. Adam Thielen, Irv Smith Jr. to help out. And not to forget Dalvin Cook, who was hugely... Uh, a big part of that success when Kevin Stefanski was still there calling plays. You have to have that balance. You have to have that defense. And, oh, by the way, it helps getting over those nine wins if you don't have Aaron Rodgers to worry about uh, in that division. I'm going to go with uh, the Saints uh, to go over nine wins. Uh, they've given a couple hits here. Obviously, Michael Thomas is going to miss early part of the season. Um, Six games from one of their defensive tackles, Omana, uh, and also Lattimore on the defensive side. But I, I think there's enough talent here. Sean Payton has done a nice job. Uh, one of the better offensive lines in football. Uh, the defense is outstanding. And I'm a believer in, in Jameis Winston. I, I think last year was probably a great year for him to sit and listen and learn from Drew Brees, uh, from Sean Payton. And I, it will be a battle. Taysom Hill is going to play. He's probably going to play 30% of the snaps. It'll be very tough to to uh, get ready and prepare for the Saints offense every week because you're not going to know what to expect. But I think Jameis Winston will be the guy, and I think he's going to have a big year. Um, and I know this offensive line is going to do well. I think Alan Kamara is going to have a gigantic year for the Saints, so I'll take them over nine. Yeah, well, remember, last time he was uh, started with the Bucks in 2019, uh, that 30 for 30, or the 30-30 club, 30 TDs, 30 picks uh, for Jameis Winston with uh, Tampa Bay. But they don't have a receiver, can't guard Mike, so we'll see about that at least early on in the season with the, uh, the surgery that he just had last month. Uh, what about the NFC win total to go under, guys? What's your play here? We'll start with you, Kenny. I'm going to go Giants under. Uh, right now, I've got them uh, rated last in the divisional, tied with Philadelphia. But Dallas is going to be vastly improved with, with Dak back. And Washington's the best defense in the division by far. Uh, still not sold on Joe Judge. Uh, 
great special teams guy with the Patriots, but now he's thrown into the role as the head coach. I think that's extremely uh, difficult to do. Uh, Danny Dimes still hasn't lived up to the name. Uh, the offensive line, I think, is below average. The defensive line, below average. Uh, this is a really tough schedule for them. Uh, I just I just don't see them getting to seven wins on the season. I think it's just going to be another long year uh, for the New York Giants. I think they're, maybe their next head coach in waiting is on the roster, and it's Jason Garrett's. I, that could cause some friction as well. And when you're Joe Judge, you should got a lot of confidence in yourself to hire an ex-head coach. Um, yeah, and when you got an ex-head coach on your staff, you know he wants to be a head coach again. So I, there's a little bit of a struggle there maybe. I, I don't know. I'm just kind of reading between the lines. I think Kenny's right, basically saying that the NFC East is going to be terrible again. I don't disagree with that. I'm not going with the Giants, however. I think I have a little more faith than Joe Judge than maybe Kenny does. But I'm going with the Eagles, and I'm going, they're not going to win seven and a half games. Now, the price is pretty steep. It's minus 190, but I can't do the math looking at that schedule where the Eagles find a way to seven and a half to eight wins. I, I, I just don't know how it's going to happen. Uh, Kenny noted that he's the, they're tied with the Giants as the worst team in that division for him, and I think they're actually going to end up being worse than that. We know Daniel Jones has his issues in New York, but I don't know what to make of Jalen Hurts. Played a hand full of games last year. Some were good. Some were really bad. And here's a fun game you can play with your friends. Ask them who the backup quarterback is in Philadelphia. And, and then wait five seconds and say it's Joe Flacco. So if you think Jalen Hurts struggles and the answer is going to be the backup quarterback, Joe Flacco ain't the answer to, to getting you more wins. So you look at the schedule here. I don't know where the wins are coming from. The offensive line, if they're healthy, that's great. They weren't healthy last year. Carson Wentz ran for his life. The defense is in shambles. There are no real pass catchers. They drafted Devontae Smith. Hopefully that works out. He had a great college career. Hopefully Jalen Rager last year's first-round pick can pick it up and, and play like a first-rounder. But a lot of hopefuls in there. And as the old saying goes, Larry, uh, hope ain't a plan. So we'll see what <laughs> happens here. But I think 7.5 at minus 190 is steep, but it almost feels like a guarantee to me. <laughs> Well, everybody has a plan, uh, Ron, until they get hit in the face. And I, I think you're saying Philly, uh, they're going to get hit in the face this year. That was a good trivia question. Like, who's the backup? And I have to think Joe Flacco played with the Jets last year, of course, Super Bowl winner uh, with the Ravens. All right, let's look at the AFC and let's go over who, uh, who's going to outperform in the American Football Conference. We'll start with you, Kenny. Yeah, and you know that backup quarterback. I was going to say Nick Mullins. I he might be the backup quarterback for Philadelphia, but uh, I, I like the Eagles under as well, Ryan. Uh, my AFC over will be the Denver Broncos. Uh, this team's defense is is one of the best in football. I think Teddy Bridgewater coming in sealed the deal for me. It was a three point upgrade over Drew Locke. They've got great receivers. Look at that receiving core. Jerry Judy, KJ Hamler, Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick. Uh, this, this team is so deep on the receiving end. Their offensive line's good. They're going to get great running out of Melvin Gordon and, and, and Royce Freeman. This, this team's got so many playmakers. Love the Broncos this year. I think they have a great year over the win total for me. I'm going to talk about the Broncos in a second. So this is going to be interesting, Kenny. But I'm going right now with the Patriots over nine and a half. You get plus money on that. And I, here's the deal. Bill Belichick won seven games last year. Bill Belichick is very, very, very angry about that. He's not looking to have a losing season again. Of course, we have one more game to play. So the nine and a half looks a little more appetizing. And this team historically wins football games. But the big missing piece, and we saw this coming in, Tom Brady isn't there. So we understand that. Is Cam Newton going to play better this year? He ain't going to play worse because he won't be on the field. And they'll turn to Mac Jones, who they draft in the first round who, if you remember back during the draft season, I absolutely love Mac Jones, so I think this is a perfect fit for him. But you can ease Mac Jones into this offense. They spent the offseason, the Patriots did, upgrading virtually every position on both sides of the ball. So they're going to be better across the board. You could say, well, maybe they're wide receivers. Kendrick Bourne and Nelson Aguilar, the new guys, aren't up to snuff in terms of being top-flight Julio Jones-type players. Fair enough, but they have enough tight ends in John New Smith uh, and Hunter Henry. They drafted two tight ends last year in 2020 that can help build around Cam, uh, Cam Newton or, or Mac Jones, and the defense is going to be good. It's going to be back to the form that we saw. I feel like nine and a half makes sense to me, given that Belichick, number one, doesn't like to lose. And this, play, this, this roster from top to bottom is upgraded over where it was a year ago. And, yeah, New England spent uh, Belichick. Uh, he is the gym there. And the head coach spent uh, hundreds of millions of dollars uh, upgrading that defense. And we'll see about Cam Newton. He has uh, talked pretty positively uh, uh, this offseason, talking about that shoulder and another year offseason uh, in the offense. Uh, AFC win total. Uh, who do you think is going uh, not to perform as well and go under? We'll start with you, Ryan. 
Yeah, I'm going to echo what Kenny just finished saying. I'm going with the Denver Broncos. And Kenny read off the list of names of why this team is so good. Couldn't agree more. My big concern is quarterback, and, and Kenny sort of touched on that. He did mention Teddy B being, a, being an upgrade over Drew Locke. And that's, that's, the, that's where we're at. How is that quarterback situation going to play out? If Aaron Rodgers comes, clearly that's a different story. If Deshaun Watson, who has talked to Kareem Jackson, his former teammate who now plays for the Broncos, and he told Kareem that he wanted to be in, in, in Denver, if that happens, again, different story. But if it's Drew Locke and or Teddy Bridgewater, I don't know if that eight and a half happens because we saw last year that team struggled without a quarterback. Yes, Cortland Sutton was gone with the ACL injury, and yes, they've upgraded certain positions. They get Cortland Sutton back. They got Javante Williams in the draft. He's a great running back. Um, they still have all those other playmakers. They got Patrick Sertan to help on defense. It's quarterback. That's the only issue for me. And if the quarterback situation goes south and they haven't made a move for Aaron Rodgers or Deshaun Watson or Teddy Bridgewater doesn't step up, eight and a half feels like a long, tall order for a team that eked its way to five wins last year. Yeah, well, if the Broncos get Aaron Rodgers, they win the Super Bowl. Uh, he'll <laughs> add three wins, three wins. But I don't mind Teddy Bridgewater. He's still above average quarterback. Uh, Green Bay is my pick. Uh, I'm sorry. I mean, go. Dol let's go Dolphins under. And, and you know, Ryan likes the Patriots to go over. I do as well. I had an edge to them to go over. Uh, Dolphins, I feel, are right now third best team. They're still better than the Jets. But this win total at nine is just far too many wins. I just can't see it happen. I I've got my questions with Tua Tagovailoa in his arm strength, whether he can stretch the field or not. He's not a Drew Brees. If you can't stretch the field, because Drew Brees couldn't throw more than 50 yards, but he could hit hit guys on, on the move and uh, was very accurate. I'm not sure that's going to be Tua. Um, I think the team's very overrated for, for a great season they had last year. And that got off to the start because Ryan Fitzpatrick had such a great start to the season. So I'm going to go under with the Dolphins here, under nine. Yeah, you look at the Dolphins, uh, Tua, man, uh, had some issues uh, throwing the ball. Didn't look like the guy that played at Alabama. We'll see uh, about his sophomore season. I like the Texans. You got to think they can go under five. They had the struggle to win four with the MVP-type performance with Deshaun Watson last year. Uh, I, I like Houston down there to, uh, to go under. Uh, guys, look at the uh, future uh, NFL wager to make right now. What's the top uh, NFL future wager? We'll start with you, Ryan, first. Uh, Larry, I thought you guys said you, you like Houston to win a lot of football games, and that's why I started laughing. You're <laughs> no, exactly right. go they're under no, five. Really very many at all. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I'm with you on that. Uh, here's the thing, though. I like the Washington football team to make the playoffs. I'm actually sort of surprised uh, that plus money. Uh, yes, to make the playoffs plus 150. They're not even favors to win the division. It's Dallas, which makes some sense. Dallas is plus 115. Washington is plus 260, which feels like a good bargain for me. Don't forget, Washington won the division last year, going 7-9. and nine. And here's the thing. I understand Dak Prescott's back. That's incredibly important. They've tried to get better on defense defense Dallas has. The big issue for me in Dallas is Mike McCarthy. He was in Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers ran him out of town. He took a year off and said he got more involved with analytics and being uh, more open-minded in terms of coaching. He did the exact same thing last year that didn't work in Green Bay. And I feel like in Washington, Ron Rivera has his team buying into what he's selling. They put players around uh, the quarterback now who's Ryan Fitzpatrick. We just heard uh, Kenny talk about how important Ryan Fitzpatrick was in Miami last year. He's an upgrade to the quarterback position in Washington as well. He can come in. He can sling the ball around. They have a running game in Antonio Gibson. They got Curtis Samuels to help Terry McLaurin. Uh, they have the, the tight end situation locked up, and that defense is absolutely dominant. I think they're going to the playoffs because they play in a terrible division, and you can rely on the defense even if you have a stretch where Ryan Fitzpatrick uh, throws some interceptions, which he's been known to do. So I, I like Washington to make the playoffs. I love the idea that it's plus money. Yeah, their defense is great. Uh, they they'll win the division because of the defense alone. I'm going to go with the Green Bay Packers at 20 to one. I, I think Aaron Rodgers is playing. I, I think the guy's ready. I think he's going to show up. I think he loves uh, loves Green Bay. He loves his teammates. And uh, right now he's a little upset with the organization. We know obviously two years ago. Uh, drafting a quarterback in the first round and not getting him any weapons. But I, I think he knows, and he wants to win a Super Bowl. He knows he has all of the weapons he needs. He knows that he's got a great defense, and here's nowhere else he can go. Right now, This they would be just too late to go to Denver to try to learn to get continuity, a new system. Just may not work. There's too many question marks. I, I People I'm hearing out of Green Bay that are big inside the organization think that he's going to sign. I, I think he's going to sign. I'm taking the Packers at 20 to 1 and over 9 in their win total. I think it's going to be easy. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers turned down uh, contract extension a, a week or so ago. We'll see uh, about that. There's a lot of scuttlebutt out there, though, guys. I mean, you look at the social media with he and Devontae Adams. I don't know. It looks a little crazy out there, but uh, we thank you guys. Kenny White, Ryan Wilson, thank you for joining us right here on CBS Sports HQ. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the top NFL future wagers and recap their picks. Top NFC win total to go over this season. Kenny White went with the Saints. 
Brown went with the uh, Vikes, both at nine there. NFC uh, win total to go under the season. Kenny took the Giants. Ron took um, the Eagles there. Top AFC uh, to go over. Kenny taking the Broncos. Ron the Patriots and top AFC win total to go under the season. Kenny taking the Dolphins. Ron going back to the Broncos. Not a big fan of what they're doing on offense. Kenny got the Green Bay Packers to win the Super Bowl. Ryan, Washington football team to make the playoffs for their top NFL future to make right now. Good stuff. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.